Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of The LA Ignite. Um, with me today, I've got Stephen. Uh, Stephen, I didn't actually ask you your, how do you pronounce your your, your second name? It is Worley. Did you it know is that there's a, I would have guessed a Worley that. village in the United Kingdom? Is there? Wow. Yeah. And you're, and you're, you're dialing in all the way from, um, from the US. All um, the way from over here in one of the sunny, sunny, California. sunny Florida, actually. Yes. Yeah. I'm Florida. Yeah. Okay. So I, I live no, I live nomadically and I just currently in Florida, you know, right. that's how uh, it was a little bit harder to leave the United States and figure out how to try to get back in the last year, shall we say. So I got to go to a lot of random places in the United States that I never thought I would be like the Panhandle of Florida. Fantastic. Uh, I, Fl Florida is a lovely place. It's like a giant, it's its own country. It's so it, it is. It, yes. I mean, a different time. That's the other thing. I never knew that Florida has two time zones. I just found that out. Like, cause I, my parents are in central Florida, right. in the Eastern time zone. And, the panhandle a part of it is in the central time zone that's how big the state is i didn't know that so where can people find you steven um i probably i'm most active on linkedin you could just search my name stephen worley um I'm one of the only ones actually i'm very lucky like that i'm like you have like two um table tennis bats behind uh, behind you i do you can find like the table tennis uh ping pong right. I, that was at my old co-working space i'm like this is a fun shot people really like that one i like that yeah it's cool it looks cool yeah it's fun and I'm also really active on Twitter, just so you can look for my full name. And then you can always email me, Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, at lifeskillsatmatter.com. Love Thank to hear from you. you. Thank you. So um, the world's changed. The future of work. A little bit. The little future bit. of work. Um, and we're talking today about why self-management is, is important. And, and you open up by saying you're, you're, you're a digital nomad. Yeah. And you're working on different time zones. So you, so 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 self-management. What what's it all about? Yeah, and I've been doing this for 20 years. And I also like to tell people I never thought I would work for myself. You know, like you always interview people like I was selling this and that when I was a, a kid and a teenager and everything. I, I did not do that. I was pretty good at Monopoly, but I did never do all those other things. But uh it was by accident and right. I got and, laid and, off a and the hotel on Park Lane in Mayfair. Uh, yes. Well, we have uh, uh, Boardwalk and Park Place. Uh, you're, 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 you are. I have not played the British version, but that you've not played the British version. Oh. I, and I got it now. I got to do it because you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so if you're so, uh, and long story short, I got laid off. Uh, I continued to look for a job for five years, but then I kept falling into freelance gigs and consulting gigs and everything. And it turns out like I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at working for myself and I'm making a lot more money and I can control my time. Why do I want to go back to an office? <laughs> and that just fell into it. And I just em finally embraced it long before, you know, it's pretty, it's becoming more common, right? There's more yeah. people than ever before considering this. Um, but 20 years ago, it was still kind of a new thing. Yes. So a big part of that, I say the number one, there's four learning curves if you're going to work for yourself. Okay. You have to validate your idea. You have to set up your business, just all your systems and your process. Yeah. You have to find customers, clients. And then this is the toughest one. This is the hardest one that everybody overlooks. You have to manage yourself. What? And managing yourself means uh, dealing with yourself. Yes. knowing yourself for yourself. And we, I think it's fair to say in the UK and the United States, we've been raised in this, in a system in the last uh, hundred or so years, maybe more where our economic system did not necessarily want us to think too much for ourselves, no. you know, because it required us to like, just do your one task over and over again and get paid for it and be happy about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And well, that whole thing has blown up, right? You know, uh, millennials, most gen, we all know like that's done, it's over. So we are now, I always tell people whether you are like, oh my gosh, Jim, I definitely know I can never work for myself. All right, fine. But even if you end up working for somebody else and that's going to be your thing, you're going to have to manage yourself. And guess what just happened in the last year, everybody? <gasps> We had to figure out how to manage ourselves because most of us, a good chunk of us have been, been working from home. And, and I would even argue, even if you uh, had an occupation where you weren't working from home, and thank you for all those people who have been out and about in the world enabling society to go on. Oh my gosh, thank you. But they're managing themselves too, managing their time. 
And I think that's the bi a big shift in work, even the role of a manager. Managers used to strategize and direct resources, human resources. But I think their future role is to be coaches, to be supportive, to remove things out of the way. And be like, hey, Tim, what's going on today? I just noticed the last several days, you're just kind of in a different place. What's up? That's the kind of conversation where empathy, I, I think, is going to be the role of a manager. Yeah, I um, I had a um, early days, a, a, a friend of mine who's a, a manager at a bank, he struggled really badly because he was, he's of the, you know, he sits in an office and he looks down, oh, Stephen's taken two hours for lunch. <laughs> he can't do that. You know, get him back in. You know, it's like, he, he's of that sort of, he said, I can't see my people. Well, that, well, that's the ridiculous thing, which drives me nuts. It's like we are valued based on how much we're seen in the office instead of on our outcomes and our productivity and our output, whatever. And also that's a double-edged sword too. But that's what we ended up. And I also I loved him. I love all those same guys who said remote work could never work. Oh, in my it'll year. never work. Well, never. Oh, yeah. We, we and all you know what? It, you know what code for that was is like I don't want to give up my control over you. Mm. Oh, look at that! We just did an international mass experiment in remote work. Funny it that globally. it was a global experiment. It wasn't like, just in, in the US, like, or the UK. It was in every single country worldwide. And like Tim, you're going to tell me like. That guy is going to tell all of his employees when this is done now. You now have to go back to the office like before for 40 hours a week. <laughs> Good luck with the, that, buddy. The, the head of uh, Barclays Bank came on TV the other day. And because, of course, he, he owns a very big, large skyscraper in Canary Wharf, which is mm. currently empty. And he says, oh, I'm looking forward for everybody to come back to the office. And he's <laughs> I, I, I talked to because I'm English. It would be tea, obviously. You know, well, you've got you've got tea there. But I got my tea right here. I've got I spat my tea out. <laughs> I, I because I I, I talked to friends too, and that's the interesting thing. I, I at the beginning of the pandemic, I released a podcast. I also have a podcast. If you're into that, life skills that matter, you can just find it your favorite podcast app. But I I, I I I call this period we're in the Great Reflection. I wanted to think of something more positive instead of like. The pandemic recession, I think they're calling it, or whatever, all that crap. Yeah, I like that. And when you have that much, you have all, this many people who have a lot of time on their hands, and they've slowed their lives down really radically. And some of people are actually experiencing boredom for the first time in their lives, which is kind of sad. Uh, they're going to think about things and do things differently. So I have a lot of friends and colleagues saying stuff that they would not have said a year ago about how they're thinking about their work. And I would say the my little straw poll in my life, the majority of them, yeah, they would like to like be with their colleagues in person again, but they don't feel like they need to do it all the time every single day of the week. Yeah, my um, my partner's son is 25 and he, he was in travel um, just before the pandemic started. So he got laid off. Yeah. So he went through the process of actually um, being recruited um, the interview process and the first day at work was all online. He only, I think he only ever went in That's the office. That's crazy. Yeah, no, no. This is, it, it's a, he only went in the office like once. And his, his mate who lives in Barcelona rang him up and said, why don't you come out here? And, um, and Luke said, no, I can't do that. No, he said, well, <laughs> yeah, you can just work from here. Well, it, there's an hour time zone, the time, time difference. So he's just said to the office, I'm going to go and work in Barcelona. And they said, yeah, okay, right. You can do if As long as you do the job and you do the output, he's in sales. So as long as you're making your number, we don't care where you are. So now, the, the, can I, now I'm going to be counterintuitive. I'm going to play devil advocates on myself. Yeah. I do think we need to actually teach people how to manage themselves, right? Because yeah. everybody's like, oh, I need structure. And well, because that's all you've ever known. You don't even know if you could have another structure, right? I was, I'm a big believer. There's infinite ways to do everything. Um, th we have one version of capitalism. There's infinite versions of it. Uh, there's this one way of working. There's infinite versions of doing that. So I think that's what we need to do is systematically teach. I mean, we have to really redo our education systems. Um, we need people to be able to think and manage for themselves. Where And it's interesting because we're at a time, at least in the United States, where the, the generation before me, at least it's my perception, they have had a lot more things done for them or figured out. Like I was the Gen X generation, like we were forgotten about. They're like, oh my God, you're here at dinner. Great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we love you. Um, no, I had great parents. But I mean, that was a little bit of like the stereotype of the Gen X generation. Like, you're, we're on our own. We always had to figure things out. Like, it's just how it was. So, and now it's at a crucial time where 
um, you know, I've been in workshops with folks in, in kind of the uh, 20 year old range who are just generally asking questions. Like I feel so overwhelmed. I'm trying to do this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, Oh, have you ever thought of like making a list of your errands and just doing them once a week, like in a two hour period? I know like that's all you're going to do. You're just going to get your errands done and just enjoy doing that. Their eyeballs just about fell out of their head. They're right. like, Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And they just really bless them, had no idea that this was an option because, and I, and I really feel sorry I, I'm, because so many people are so anxious and overwhelmed and burdened. And I really do believe if you can start slowing down, start learning about yourself, knowing yourself for yourself, because Tim, you probably like to do things differently than I like to do. And, I, and yep. everybody listens to us now yep. and that's okay. Cause there's no one size fits all productivity. Yeah. And I think that's, um, we have to empower people to say, you've got this, you're a human being, you have energy, like your brain wants to survive. If you allow that to kick in, you're going to figure things out. You can't, you can do it. It was it, it, the thing that I found interesting about him, uh, the 20, Luke, 25 year old is that he was, he's the one of the people that's insisted that he wants to work in an office. Well, again, I think it's it's um, it's a need for st what I would then say when folks say like that to me, I'm like, that's fine. You're good self awareness. What another? What you're also saying, not unknowingly, is I need structure. I think Great. it is structure, yes. But what I'm asking you to say, would you like a structure that you've created and is designed that works for you, or do you want to have somebody else's structure imposed on you? That's a starting. A, that's a different track of thinking. Yeah, and I think some of it also is, you know, um, at my age, you know, I've got a house when I've got an office, whereas Luke, you know, he lives in a shared flat and, you know, mm -hmm. there's dogs running by and, and he can only kind of work in his in his bedroom. So, um, you know, kind of going out to the office means that he's got something a little bit more professional around him. And um, a quick disclaimer on everybody. The last year is not the best um, experience of what the potential of remote work looks like, all right? You know, even for me, who's been working for myself for the last 20 years, it's been rough, you know what I mean? A lot of isolation. Um, so I just also want to say, like, don't... I, I think that's what I also say to people. I don't think it's going to be an either war. We're all going to be remote work or we're all going back to an office. My hope is the change is now that we all realize that we have a decision, a right to decide what works best for us in terms of how we want to do our work. And we can communicate that with the people that we work with. I and mean, when you get a job, you know, you, you don't have to be hard line. You'd be like, it'd be great if I could have this, this, and this. Are you open to that? You can ask those questions. And I think that's the thing that is changing. I think people are getting more confidence to ask those questions. Where, so whereas what, before they just rolled over and said, yes, boss, I'll do whatever you want. Give me the job. So what, what you talk to people all the time about what they need to do to to, to learn about self ma management. Yeah. So, um, what what is it that that that, that what's at, at the core of that, that that people basically need to understand? I actually think I'm really good at prioritizing things because you know yeah. things come to you and I go, well, I'm not doing that. And and one of the things that was really interesting was I sent you an email yesterday, and you said, and I got out of out an office saying I'm actually concentrating on something until, until April the nineteenth. And I thought that was fantastic, you know, because here's someone in it was a hard decision though, Tim. Right. <laughs> It's a hard decision, especially when you work for yourself to tell yeah. people. Yeah. And I love people and I I, I don't I like helping people. So in a part of my brain is like, I'm telling people I can't help you for the next six weeks. And that that hurts. But yeah. I also know that I need to do that so I can help even more people over the long term. So this is the number one thing I want to tell people. Um, people refer to this, I want to manage my time. You, that's not the whole thing. Or I want to be more productive. You don't want to be more productive. Corporations want to be more productive. So let's break this down. I would like people to understand self-management is about managing your personal resources. Time is one of your personal resources. Your most important personal resource that nobody ever gets, everybody misses, and you let it be robbed from you day in and day out, every second of the day, and it's your attention. Even as you're listening to me right now, I'm sure your brain just went off somewhere. Your phone went off, something happened to your computer. And your brain's like, ooh, what's happening over here? That is your most limited and valuable personal resource. And if you can start being aware of where your attention is going, 
and the triggers that make it distracted. That is the heart of really understanding self-management. Your second most important personal resource is your energy because you have a limited energy. I always tell people just because you're awake 16 hours a day does not mean every single hour is yeah. equal in terms of your available energy. And then we move on to time. And then there's your connections, your knowledge, and money. Money is like one of your least uh, important personal resources, in my opinion, because that's just, it's a storage device of energy, of wealth. You need attention and energy to direct time, to uh, acquire knowledge, build connections, and then you get money. So we over-focus on money. We've over-prioritized money and time in this paradigm of personal resources. So that's what I, I want to point out to people. Like you're managing these resources. The second part of that is you're not just managing them. A lot of times we manage these resources to live up to the standards of other people, other people's status. I mean, we're all, so many people are just drunk on social media to be like, this is what I'm supposed to look like. This is what success is and all that type. Like just do yourself a favor, like take a social media break for like a month. Find out what you want. And you want to align those personal resources and how you use them with your values, your needs, and your abilities. And that's the heart of, of self-management for me. I, I love that because it, it, I, I agree with you. Um, uh, you said something when we did the, the preparation, which is about not focusing on money. And I agree with you that the, the money will come. Well, you're also, you've been in business forever too, right? I mean, I was a former sales trainer. Don't judge me, anybody listening, but I'm now using my skills for good. And we talked about sales pipelines, right? And I'd sit one-on-one -on -one with these account executives and they're all worried about their quarterly numbers. And I'm like, you're focusing on the wrong end of a pipeline. Because then I would like, how many people have you met in the last week? How many emails have you sent out? Oh, none. But... Well, how is money going to come out if you don't put people in at the top it's of well. the pipeline? <laughs> Just focus on that and stuff will come out the other end. Hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and I agree that your attention, your energy, and your time are uh, so I, I, valuable. And we, and we, that, you know what the other thing, Tim, we do? We treat them as if they were infinite resources. Mm -hmm. They aren't. I really probably work an average of five hours a day. At times, I probably put in uh, an eight to 10 hour day to get things done, but it's not consistently. So when I hear people constantly almost bragging that they're working 10 hour days, like I'm supposed to be impressed that I'm a hard worker. My brain's like, it sounds like you don't have priorities. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're, you're, you're heading toward burnout. This is unsustainable. You just don't know it yet. And that, I mean, I did. I did something a couple of years ago, which is I turned off all the pings. There's no. I have no pings. There's no. Um, the only thing that I have is a um, uh, tells me when when the next appointment's coming up on my calendar. Apart from that, I don't ta get told when there's a mail. Any mails coming in? I just spent right now. I need to do, go to email, and I'll go to email. Otherwise, uh, my partner, you know, she's sitting there and it's like this email comes in and it's like uh, and, it, and all these distractions. Like, how do you ever get anything done? Well, but that's what I also want to tell people. Uh, and what you're describing is everybody's allowing technology to rule over them. It's like a new boss. You're just like constantly doing what it wants. It's designed like that. It's if, if, if you have you seen the social dilemma, the movie yeah. on Netflix? Yes. Anybody listening? If, you, if there's one thing you can remember from this interview is please, please watch that movie so you can understand how you're being manipulated and exploited by technology companies. We are spending way too much time in front of screens. I know you've all heard that message. But like Tim was saying, is it's like, I think Tim and I, we decide what technology is going to do for us. It's yep. not the other way around as it is for most people. And you start opening your eyes. And it's like, and the way I use it, you say, uh, you don't want all the bings. I call it being pinged. And like even my phone, I've taken most of it off. Or I always tell people, when you download an app and it asks you to send notifications, you always say, don't allow. Come on. <laughs> Otherwise, your phone's constantly going off. I mean, before I started this interview, the first thing I did, I was sitting there talking to you and I was switching off Slack and I was switching off email so I don't get all these, so I can concentrate on this. Um, you know, what's I, another I, thing I, I, would, I need to talk to you immediately. It's like, well, I can't do anything about it because I'm, I'm interviewing Stephen. You know, it's like. Well, you know, what's another thing I would ask people. I'm a big believer. Uh, another self-management technique is when we want to do these things, we feel like I'm going to go all in and commit. I'm going to do this thing that I heard on this podcast. What I would recommend instead is number one, 
I don't want you to do exactly what I'm doing or what Tim's doing. Yeah. If you think it was interesting that Tim or Steven mentioned something, what I would prefer you do, suggest you do is just do an experiment. And I really am a big believer in 30 day experiments because that gets you through learning curves. You, it, you also can feel the withdrawal symptoms. You can <laughs> start building the habits. Yeah, you really start noticing that's and that's the other the most important life skill is self awareness. And that's the tool that helps you manage yourself. That's your teacher It's as you're observing your behavior um, from a third party perspective, but without judgment, that people confuse self awareness as I'm judging myself, you're just observing yourself to say I did this set of behaviors. This is the outcome. Do I like that outcome or not? If I don't, well, how am I going to change these behaviors? And a lot of us right now, feel anxious and overwhelmed on the verge of burnout. Do you want to keep feeling like that? Most people are like, no. I'm like, okay. So why don't we do some experiments? Why don't you just uh, limit your screen time, turn off all the notifications. I would say step one, turn off all the no notifications on your darn phone. <laughs> or even if you have the courage, like put it in airplane mode for like a block of time mm. during the day if you really want to do something that's important to you. Just don't get bothered by it. The world's not going to stop. Yeah, I've, I've I've started putting my phone in sleep mode, so it goes off at ten, and and I can't remember what time it comes on seven or something in the morning. But it, it's just it, so I don't even get you know, there's nothing. It just, yeah. it's just I, gone. And, and also, I know it's hard because I got to experience life for the first twenty years without the internet, so I know like it's going to be okay if we didn't have the internet. <laughs> and I know if, if folks are just like they've lived with this all the time; they don't know a different benchmark. So that's why I think experimenting with this, like giving yourself that new benchmark of what is it like not being constantly gnawed at. You're, that's what's happening. So all these companies are basically their business model is mining attention. Yes, they are taking your personal resource and you're willing. It's like it's like if you had a pile of cash mm -hmm. and you just said, "Just kept giving it away," mm -hmm. like you wouldn't do that, right? But that's what you're doing with your attention every yeah. day. And that is your most valuable limited personal resource. And it's the whole game here in terms of living a life with intention. Right. Stephen, this has been fantastic. I've been, it's a great um, insight. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, remind, people where they can, re remind people where they can get hold of you. You can go out, head on over to lifeskillsatmatter.com. Um, and if you're interested in working for yourself, head on over to lifeskillsatmatter.com slash get started. And you just scroll down the bottom. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn on the website. And on, on LinkedIn, I'm not sure about Twitter, but on LinkedIn, you have this picture with these two ping pong um, bats, as you would I call do. It. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Table tennis, as you would call it. Table tennis. <laughs> 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 Stephen, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And, um, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Stephen. Good to talk. Bye.